Hey, what's going on everyone? Flick here and welcome to the first installment of what I hope will become a recurring series on the channel, that being realistic rebuilds. Because the Bundesliga and the German leagues are sort of my forte, we'll be kicking off this series with a Werder Bremen rebuild. If you've watched any of the career modes I've done so far in FIFA 21, you know I like to add a realistic twist and develop some unique storylines. That same premise will apply here. So for each episode, I'm going to give you the background information that you need to know about each club. And then I'll document some of the transfers I make as as well as some gameplay leading up to the final match that I play in this save. In this case, that'll be the Champions League final. Make sure to leave a like if you're interested in seeing more rebuilds like this one and consider getting involved in the comment section with some club suggestions on what rebuilds you want to see next. The 2021 Bundesliga season was one of the most dramatic in recent history. Records were broken and two of the Bundesliga's most historic sides, that being Schalke and Werder Bremen, were relegated. In order to offset the drop from Germany's top division, Bremen are looking to acquire about 20 million euros worth of funds from player departures. That means the squad that you see here is not the same that Bremen will start the upcoming season with, and we're going to try to reflect that in this rebuild. But before we talk about some of the players at the club, as well as some transfers that we want to make, I want to talk some more about Bremen's history. Four-time Bundesliga winners won as recently as the 03-04 camp, campaign, Bremen are one of those rare cases where the right combination of players and some standout individual performances can lead to an upset and the taking of the Bundesliga title from Bayern, who have largely dominated the league in the 21st century. Perhaps the player that most stole the show was Brazilian goal scorer Ailton, who scored 28 goals in 33 league appearances. But Ailton isn't the only historic Bremen player. Both Miroslav Klose and Mesut Ozil wore the number 11 for the club and launched their career into the world stage before making transfers to Bayern Munich and Real Madrid respectively. Claudio Pizarro is another Bremen legend, and while he had a few spells at Bayern, He's one of those few players that has gained the utmost respect with both sets of fans and even recorded a couple of Bundesliga records along the way, such as being the top all-time foreign goal scorer in the Bundesliga over a 20-year playing career. Obviously, there's a lot more to the club, but that's a quick synopsis and we'll discuss some other realistic aspects of Bremen throughout the rebuild. But for now, let's talk about the club's current situation and what changes the squad might be needed. First, I'll expand upon the confirmed transfers as these players will be transfer listed. Rashica made the move to recently promoted Norwich City in the Premier League. He's a versatile player and I think he'll do well next season. And more importantly for Bremen, this is going to get them very close to the 20 million euro mark that they set out for at the beginning of the season for player departures. The other transfer was for promising center defensive midfielder Patrick Eras. He'll be joining Zweiter Bundesliga club Holstein Kiel. Two free transfers as a result of players contracts coming to an end. Boysander heading to Swedish club Malmo and Selassie returning to his home nation in the Czech Republic. These are big departures because while both players are older, they had a great overall rating. So we'll need to replace those positions in the near future. There are several transfer rumors for Bremen, some of which I'm sure will happen before the summer transfer window comes to an end. Augustinsson has said that he wants to leave Bremen. Right now, it's still undetermined which club he'll be joining. And then there's promising American international Josh Sargent. I would say as of right now, it is looking like he'll make the move away from Bremen. But in my opinion, in the direction that we'll be taking for this rebuild, I think he's best off staying at Werder. That way, he's going to get lots of play time. And if he has a successful campaign, he's still going to receive interest from other clubs. Or even better yet, he'll be in great form and also be playing for a newly promoted Werder Bremen side. Another really interesting transfer scenario for homegrown talent Maximilian Eggestein. A few seasons ago, he was starting to receive interest from clubs in the Premier League. He decided to turn those offers down and stay at Werder Bremen. Now there's some unsettling news going down. He's recently changed away from his longtime agent, which kind of hints at the fact that he might go another direction. Of course, I wouldn't blame any player for leaving because they want to play in the top flight of any respective division. But I think Eggestein's situation is very similar to Sargent. He needs to have a successful campaign in the Zweite Bundesliga in order for him to get good offers and maybe break into the German national team. Of course, it wouldn't be a rebuild if we didn't develop some high potential promising players. Felix Agu is someone that is rated very highly in the career mode scene. He's listed as a left back by default, but because he's right footed, we're going to be switching him over to the right back position. And then there's our pre-order homegrown talent, Christian Schmidt, a center mid slash center defense in mid 81 to 94 potential already at an overall of 71. Bremen is known to develop some great midfielders and it looks like we might have the next best one here. So keeping those confirmed transfers and rumors in mind, this is the squad that we'll be heading into the summer transfer window with. There are some weak points in the team, but I'm going to try to keep player rivals to a minimum as a recently relegated side is looking for funds they're not able to splash the cash quite as much quickly going through our board objectives the main one for this season is to basically 
get promoted back to the Bundesliga. That's going to be their same aim IRL. And personally, I think they can do it. They just need to catch some good form. To begin with, I'm going to hire an additional youth scout. I'm always going to have two scouts each season, setting up networks in different countries. And for this first network, we'll be keeping a scout in Germany for nine months, just looking for any type of player and signing any high potential youth academy talents that come through. However, our first foreign scouting network will be looking for that Pizarre region of sorts as we set up a network in Peru for nine months looking for an attacker. The first transfer that we'll make is going to add some needed squad depth to our defense and also a transfer that Bremen have made IRL. Anthony Jung joining the club on a free. We had to pay 1.5 million as he still had a contract that was current in this save. You might have noticed that we were quite weak at the left back position. This transfer, I think, will make up for that. Jetser Williams has been a baller in the career mode space for quite a few years now. He had some good seasons in the Premier League at Newcastle, but he finds himself at Eintracht Frankfurt right now. I think he would be okay with making the move away because he's not really getting too much play time for them. This is another bargain of a transfer, only paying three million for a player that can play at the left wing back position or if needed, be converted to a different role. So with the Schweizer Bundesliga season ready to get underway, this is going to be the new look Werder Bremen squad. Most of our players in the lower to mid 70s, but we have a couple of standouts like Pavlenka at an 80 overall and Toprak at 77. So it seems like if we want to find success, we need to rely on our defense. Talking about some of the fixtures that we had in the first half of season, one we saw a 2-0 victory on our opening day match and then later in the season there is a rivalry between Hamburg and Werder Bremen with them now being in the same division that's going to make for some great fixtures IRL Hamburg get the better of us though in this first match as they won that 2-0 so as we roll into January we find ourselves second place just short of Schalke so if current results stand the two sides that saw relegation last season we'll see immediate promotion. Also, we've got updates on Peruvian Youth Academy talents. Romero Avila is probably the closest thing that we'll find to a Claudio Pizarro regen. Center forward slash striker at a 66 overall, 84 to 90 potential. Seems to be quite gifted in the pace and dribbling department. And then we've got Javi Harido, who is listed as a left mid slash center mid, but I think could also be converted to a center forward slash striker if we really wanted to. Both of these players will see promotion and will be sent out on a couple of loan spells. I'll update y'all if they make their way into the starting 11 or substitutes. But for this next scouting network, we will be looking for the Ailton regen. Six months in Brazil as we search for a technically gifted player. And just a single transfer going down in the winter transfer window as Osaka, who actually scored a goal in our opening day fixture. He'll be on his way to the Austrian Bundesliga, joining RB Salzburg for 2.3 million. So we'll check in now on the 9th of April with this match against Hanover, who are competing to be one of the sides that see automatic promotion. A win against them would be big in helping us get back to the Bundesliga. So we'll get into some gameplay here and a sharp contrast in what formation the two sides are using. We're relying on our fullbacks to get forward and provide some width, whereas Hanover have a very narrow formation of 4-1-2-1-2. Because this video is already going to be quite lengthy, I'm going to keep highlights at a minimum compared to what I'm used to doing for crew mode videos. So mostly showing any goals or key chances. Hanover do end up taking the early lead against us. Just took 10 minutes for them to do so. But we'll respond here in the 56. Agu with the cross. That's punched away. We do manage to retain possession though. Eggestein with the pass inside to Sargent. Sees the run from Fulkrug and he will go with the cross goal effort. That'll be the leveler in the 58th minute. A big goal for us as we try to find the winner. 81st minute. Again, we're using the width, and it's Agu, who seems to be a standout player, finding Josh Sargent. The headed effort towards goal will find the back of the net. And as we keep on developing that storyline of making this American player one of the best in Germany, we'll pick up a win in this one and help our chances of getting back to the Bundesliga. Other than some early defensive mistakes, I'm liking these Werder Bremen tactics, and I think we can find success. That win against Hanover ended up being crucial towards our points tally. We finished three points ahead of Hamburg for that automatic promotion spot. Schalke were the top side in the Schweizer Bundesliga as they'll be joining us next season. And just to scout out some of our competition, it was FC Bayern that won the Bundesliga title. Kind of a surprise appearance in second as Leverkusen finished there. Leipzig and München Gladbach round out the Champions League spots. And then you've got Dortmund and Frankfurt both finishing in Europa League positions. As far as other German competitions go, Leverkusen did go on to win the DFB Pokal. And unfortunately for our rival Hamburg, they lost the promotion playoff finals. So Bochum will be staying in the Bundesliga. Real Madrid were winners of Champions League. And Napoli 
with a victory in the Europa League final 4-3 against Leipzig on the penalty kick shootout. I'm not surprised at all that Sargent was the top goal scorer. He saw a plus five in his rating, 16 goals across 35 appearances. It looks like Eggestein was the top player for assists as he also got into the double digits in that category. Our homegrown talent, Christian Schmitz, saw some steady growth, plus five in his rating to a 76 overall. Seems to be a leader for us in the midfield. And a quick update on that Brazil scouting network. We had one all right player come through it was Breno Ribeiro, a center attacking mid. And I think Ailton was also left-footed, so that fits in perfectly there as this player has 75 to 94 potential. So far, so good on the rebuild. We're at a decent manager rating. We'll see if we can find similar form in the top division of Germany. Whenever a club sees promotion, some sort of marquee signing is needed. And that's definitely the case for this Werder Bremen squad. We're solid, but we need some of those high overall players if we want to withstand the test of some of the Bundesliga's best clubs. The board also did us a solid by giving us a sharp increase in our transfer budget, right around 40 million euros to work with. And the expectation for this season is to make that crucial transfer and also finish mid-table in the league, reach the round of 16 in the Pokal. Without fail, I always check the free agents no matter what season you're in in career mode. Sometimes you can find some gems and even realistic transfers like this one. Max Meyer hasn't had the most successful seasons. His time at Palace wasn't the best, and it appears that his contract has come to an end over at FC Cone. So now he's available as a free agent, and he's going to be that crucial first team player for us in the midfield. Of course, he's listed as a left midfielder by default, but he can play center mid or center attacking mid. And with a valuation at 12.5 million, this is going to be a good pickup for us. Even better yet, I feel like he's going to play exceptional in game. The four star skill move, four star weak foot combo, and a couple of good traits to go along with that. And it seems like we have a connection with current or former Newcastle players. First, we had Jetra Willems come in, and now Fabian Scher at a 77 overall will be the next big pickup for us. Back when he was at Basel, he used to have a lot of potential in career mode, and I feel like it's not too late for a defender like him to have dynamic potential takeover. Even if it doesn't work out and his rating stays in the upper 70s, he's still our second best center back. So now we can confidently say that most of our players are in the upper 70s, and we can rely on a couple of stand-up performers like Josh Sargent last season to carry us through to a mid-table finish in the Bundesliga. Our calendar fixtures also did us a solid. We matched up against Bochum, who are right around our level for the opening match day. We won that fixture 1-0, courtesy of a sole goal from Fulkrug. And I honestly haven't seen a club as prestigious as PSG to offer up a manager job so early in the season. You can see it's on the 1st of December in just season two. Of course, we declined that offer as this is a Werder Bremen rebuild. But going into the January transfer window, it all started to make more sense because we were in a Europa League spot, well above board expectations. And if we can somehow find our way into Europe next season, this may end up being a quick rebuild. It leaves us with some questions to ask what we should be doing about our squad. Should we just keep trust and our current selection of players as they've gotten us this far? Or should we look to make even more improvements? I know that we had some extra players at the club that weren't really featuring. For the most part, they were just sent out on loan. So I figure we may as well cash in on some extra funds. So we had a total of four departures in this January transfer window. I would expect all those funds were pretty close to the 10 million mark. Those funds will be just enough for us to approach Robin Koch from Leeds United. He's a very promising player, but because Leeds were struggling in the Premier League, I felt like if we were ever going to bring in this sort of talent, now is probably the best time to do so as we make the push for Europa League, if not Champions League. It was a pretty sizable fee at 27.5 million, but we're investing in the future. I believe Koch can be one of the crucial players at this Werder Bremen squad. And because Toprak did suffer an injury, we needed that extra squad depth. So this will be the team going into the remainder of the Bundesliga season. And we'll catch up in April again as we have a fixture against Borussia Mönchengladbach. And the reason I wanted to highlight this match is because Mönchengladbach set just one point ahead of us for that fourth and final Champions League spot. Tactics-wise, we might need to utilize a different strategy. Mönchengladbach also using a fairly wide formation, the 4-2-3-1. They've made some good transfers like Kulp Miners at the center defense in mid position. They already have some excellent talent in their squad. But let's not forget, we made some improvements as well. And hopefully some of our new transfers like Kulp can lead us to a defensive masterclass. It's safe to say we had high expectations, but we were quickly brought down to reality. A good tackle there from our defender, to be fair, but Borussia Mönchengladbach were just ruthless on possession, and it's Mbolo that opens up the scoring. 15 minutes into this one, they are going to get out on the right foot in this match, and he really was the star player in this side. It's Torum to make it two in the 33rd. 
which means that we're going to need to push forward our fullbacks from here on out if we even want to get a draw from this one. We saw a slightly better performance in the second half. It's full Krug to play through Eggestein. I expected that to find the back of the net, but what are you going to do here in the 90th minute? The result is pretty much determined, but Mönchengladbach will get an extra goal just to rub salt in the wound. And maybe this dream of Europa League was a little too far-fetched for season two. But with that said, we'll see how we finish this Bundesliga campaign. It was absolute heartbreak for us. It seemed like we collapsed after that Borussia Mönchengladbach match as we fell outside of the top six. Still achieving a top half of the table finish, which keep in mind, that was our board objective. If it counts for anything, Mönchengladbach lost in the final of the DFB Pokal as that went to Leipzig. Manchester United winning an all-Manchester Champions League final on penalties. And Barcelona also winning on penalties 4-3 over Chelsea in the Europa League final. One of the cool things about rebuilds is unexpected players that come through and end up being star performers. It's safe to say that Fulkrug has been that for us so far in the rebuild. He scored some goals in the gameplay, and he was our top scorer in Season 2. 15 goals from 37 appearances. Sargent also getting into the double digits. A little bit lackluster on the assist numbers, but it was one of our new transfers for Season 2, Meyer, that netted 5 assists from 29 appearances. And a quick update on top growth. It's one of our Youth Academy players from Peru, the left midfielder, that saw a plus 7 in Season 2, up to a 73 overall. I was disappointed that we couldn't make the push up to Europe this season, However, our manager rating is in really good shape, so that left me with a lot of optimism heading into Season 3. Without question, the overlying objective for Season 3 is to get Werder Bremen back into European competitions for the first time since the 10-11 season. With some of our young players developing quickly and some of our big transfers performing well, I think this squad is capable of that. We're also going to see a pretty decent transfer budget, especially for a mid-table side, as we have about 28 million to work with. Partly due to our board objectives saying that we need to sell players and also to reflect some realism in the save, we will be transfer listing Josh Sargent. I think now that he's in 80 overall, he's a little bit more established. This transfer to Leicester City is perfect. They seem to sign a lot of high potential strikers, for example, Ian Nacho a couple of seasons ago, and now Potts and Daka in the most recent transfer window. Two additional transfers to go with that. Vesta was one of our backup left backs, and Capino, a pretty high-rated backup goalkeeper. Jetro Willems has served us well for the first two years, but I think it is time for an upgrade. We'll be going after a Greek player. I would say the Bundesliga is one of the more popular destinations for players from Greece, and because Timakas hasn't received all that much playtime at Liverpool, Andy Robinson is an absolute machine and has stamina for days. We're going to make this transfer for $25 million. Already well established, but still someone that we can develop for the future. We'll be switching him over to the left wing back role, and I'd say that his attacking statistics are already pretty solid, so we're just going to round out his defensive stats. I have some mixed feelings about this Bremen squad. We could have potentially potentially splash more cash in the summer transfer window. But I thought giving an opportunity for Johannes Eggestein, who has developed nicely in this save, would probably be the most realistic thing to do. And heading into the January transfer window, I forgot to grab a screenshot of the league standings, but if I recall correctly, we were sitting right around mid-table, slightly outside of European spots. Some of our players have done really well, like Simakas, who has gone up plus two in his rating. I can't say the same thing about Eggestein, pretty much halted at that 76 overall, despite seeing some really good growth in the first two seasons. And to make matters worse, some of our players requested to be transferred due to the lack of playtime. Bincourt was a squad depth player for us in the midfield, very versatile, but he'll be heading to Lazio for 11.7 million. And as mentioned earlier, Eros was transfer listed He's off to Ginkamp for 2.55 million. Our scouting network in Brazil brought back some decent results, but I think signing a high overall and high potential striker from Brazil was probably the way to go. At the same time, I wanted to keep transfers pretty realistic, so I wasn't going to go and sign a Brazilian striker from a Premier League club or someone that's too well established. Arthur Cabral ended up being the perfect candidate as he is playing at Basel, which is a fairly realistic club that does business with Werder Bremen. Also at an 81 overall, he's going to fit right in and become a star player in this squad. It's a record-breaking transfer as well for Cabral as he inherits the number nine role, joining Bremen for 40 million. Really not too many players left in the 70s for their rating, a couple right on the cusp of an 80 overall. We've got great squad depth to go along with that as well. We'll check in with 23 matches played. It's a fixture against sixth place Hertha Berlin, who sit just three points behind us that we're going to highlight for this season's gameplay. Without question, this result against Berlin may determine what our future looks like at Bremen. Are we going to take the step up to Europa League? And are some of our big transfers going to perform above expectations? You can see from this Bundesliga graphic that Bayern are again on the verge of another league title, but it's Berlin 
who are one of those sneaky sides in career mode. They've got some high potential players, including Mateus Cunha, who opens up the scoring for them 10 minutes into the match. And bad news as Max Meyer picks up an injury. I talked about how Willems is a versatile player and we're actually going to use him in the midfield. Works out great because he's left footed and can kind of play that box to box midfielder role. Just the one minute of added extra time by the referee, but we're four minutes past that now as it's Eggestein, the center midfielder who's trying to get a shot opportunity. It's saved well by the keeper. And unfortunately, the ref will call for the break. We're making a change as it's Johannes Eggestein, the striker that gets brought on in the 63rd minute, offers something different than Cabral. Definitely has more pace, which can come in handy, especially when defenses are tired. He's played through here in the 65th minute, gets by the defender well, and that's a classy finish on the far post. While he might not be the best fit for the starting striker role, he's going to be an impact sub for the next few seasons, as that is enough to give us a draw from this one. Of course, I would have liked the win, but because Berlin have so many high potential players, I think this is a favorable result for us. And as we check in on the final Bundesliga standings for season three, it was enough for us to finish sixth place, which guarantees Europa League. Dortmund went on to win the DFB Pokal over Dusseldorf, Inter winning the Champions League final over Manchester United, and a Bundesliga victory in the Europa League as Leverkusen won that match 4-2 over Benfica. Once again, it's Fulkrug who scored the most goals for the club, 17 from 35, but a goal from every two matches. Also, Schmidt on the rise, 13 from 35. Cabral, pretty good performance for just half a season. Still would like to get those assist numbers up a little bit more, but it's Eggestein that led the way, seven assists from 34. And behind the scenes, I did set up a scouting network in Greece. Of course, we had the Simakas transfer, who will kind of act as our Greek player for this save, but it's still fun to highlight this sort of player growth. Plus four for Lampros up to a 67. I feel a little bit hard done for our manager rating seeing a minus 20 drop despite us meeting the domestic objective of reaching the Europa League. But hopefully we can get that rating back up to the green for season four. As evidence from the Max Meyer injury and having to play a left wing back in the midfield, my plan of action for season four is to add some more squad depth in that area. Hopefully sign someone that's young enough that can grow into a long-term player in this rebuild. But exciting scenes as we take a look at our Europa League group. We have Nice, Pauk, and Molde. And a sharp rise in our transfer budget, 67 million. That's about 30 million more than we've had in seasons prior. Board objectives-wise, some ambitious targets from the Bremen board. They want us to qualify for champions league at this stage in the save some good talents outside of the top five leagues will have developed on the verge of becoming world class Giannis Haji is a career mode favor the right winger can also play center attacking mid four star skills and a five star weak foot means that he's going to fit in nicely as our starting left center midfielder not quite breaking records for this transfer only having to pay about 30 million but this is a player that will have had experience in the Europa League Rangers usually progress to the later stages of that competition we won't be stopping there though Victor Nelson I signed him very early on in my Southampton save at the beginning of FIFA 21. And because I have that past experience, I know that he could be a leader for us from the back. Again, it's a transfer from a club outside the top five leagues. Copenhagen will be accepting an 18 million bid for Nelson. And with a center back coming in, I think it only makes sense that Fabian Scher will be departing a club for Lyon. Interestingly enough, the two signings that we made are actually tied for being the lowest rated players in our starting 11, but because they've got time on their side, I see their rating rising sharply. Checking in in January of 2024, we've had a decent campaign up to this point, sitting just outside of Europa League spots, seventh place right now. Keep in mind though that Champions League is the aim, and as things stand, we are four points behind Leverkusen for that fourth place spot. Europa League, on the other hand, went quite well for us. We finished second in our group with 10 points. And because this recording was spaced out over several days and weeks, I wanted to add some more realism to the save and make another signing that Bremen had made IRL. Lars Lucas Mai, the center back from FC Bayern Sway, has joined the club for the 21-22 season on a loan. So I figured why not add another high potential center back to our team, give us a little bit more squad depth as we completed this transfer for just 10 million. Honestly, no complaints squad wise we suffered a couple of injuries meaning that Mai has had to make his way into the substitutes instead of Velkovic who I quite like in game but getting into our knockout stage matchups in the Europa League we've got a long path to the final starting in the round of 32 and it's a tough opponent in Napoli the home fixture ended in a 1-0 result but unfortunately on the away match we lost that 2-0 had Fulkrug 
converted that 82nd minute penalty, we would have advanced to the round of 16. So that's quite the shame. Villarreal went on to win the Europa League with a 4-2 final victory against Atalanta, which means that if we want to make the step up to Champions League, we need to finish top four in the Bundesliga. There is a slight chance of us doing so. One fixture remaining in the league, we sit two points behind Mönchengladbach. That means that we need to get a win and rely on either a draw or a loss as they face off against Schalke and Nofir. It seems like we're facing off against a lot of these Berlin clubs. Union Berlin have actually been the better between the two Berlin clubs in the Bundesliga. And they've got a cool destination for their stadium. It's basically in the middle of a forest in the outskirts of the city. But getting into these highlights, we knew that we needed goals. Cabral is going to put in his best effort to do so. Playing it outside to Agu, in to Haji. He takes a heavy touch and with that five-star weak foot, no problem for him on his left. The near post effort, finding the back of the net, giving us a 31st minute lead. Into the second half now in a nervy moment as Union Berlin threw on the break. It's Pavlenka with the save and a quality block from Friedel. The Austrian center back, who's an original part of the Werder Bremen squad, ended up being a star in this rebuild. Avia is our Peruvian Youth Academy player. One could say that he is our Pizarro regen. Nice goal from him there in the 72nd minute to double our lead and pretty much ensure the victory. We absolutely did what we had to do, but whether it will be enough is a whole nother question as we needed to rely on Schalke to put in a good performance against Mönchengladbach. Probably the most nervy fixture of this rebuild. Unfortunately, it's going to be Europa League again for us next season, finishing two points shy of Mönchengladbach. But I would still say it's been a successful campaign. We even went on to reach the semifinals of the Pokal, with Dortmund winning the entire competition. Real Madrid won the Champions League in an all-Spanish final, and after two consecutive seasons of full crew carrying the squad for goals, we're going to see the passing of a torch, one could say, as both Cabral and full crew finished with 17 goals. Eggestein again leading the club in assists as Schmidt is right behind him, and some double-digit growth for one of our youth academy findings from Germany. Going into the season, I wanted to get our manager rating up to the green, but because we didn't finish in a Champions League spot, we now find ourselves in the red, and at risk of losing our job. Although he's going to go down as a hero in this rebuild, purely due to his goal output, Full Krug is getting up there in age and a replacement striker is needed. As we start to think about transfers, we need to keep in mind that we are in Europa League once again, but we have 76.7 million to work with, and we need to be sure to meet some of these objectives to get our manager rating up. Shouldn't be a problem though, as one of our objectives has us looking to sign a first team midfielder or forward. Plenty of striker options to choose from, but again, I'm going to look outside the top five leagues. Hawk was actually in our Europa League group stage last season, and for any of you that watch my Marseille career mode, you already know of Christian Solis. By default, he's a left winger, but a lot of people in the career mode community actually use him as a striker. So we'll set another trance record here, bringing in Solis for 55 million and immediately putting him on the striker development plan, which will take roughly a season to complete. Because Fulkrug is going to become our new backup striker on the bench, I figured we may as well cash in on whatever funds we can get for Eggestein. Plenty of offers for him, but I decided to go with this one from Benfica as they have signed a couple of German players in the last few seasons. By now, I feel like this squad can genuinely compete in Champions League, so we should definitely be looking to win Europa League this time around. And catching up with the squad at the beginning of the January transfer window, we put in a good shift in the Bundesliga, currently fourth place, and noticeably just two points shy of league leaders Hertha Berlin. No surprise for Europa League, as this time we went on to win our group, which will be favorable for our matchups in the knockouts. A few of our players also going up in their overall. Pavlenka now up to an 87, and genuinely becoming one of the world's best goalkeepers but unfortunately as we approach the end of January Pavlenka suffers a long-term injury he's out for three months I'm glad this happened within the transfer window because otherwise we would be stuck with a goalkeeper in the mid 70s. Kevin Trapp has made the transfer abroad to Newcastle, but having spent a number of seasons in the Bundesliga, I think he would be okay with a backup role at this stage of his career. And a quick tip for career mode is that these older goalkeepers tend not to be very high for their valuation. I think we signed Trapp right around the 5 million mark. Two players will be leaving the club in this January transfer window. Jetro Willems, now at 30 years old, hasn't featured all that much for us in the last season or two, so he'll be headed to Levante. And unfortunately, I didn't get a news report on one of these youth academy players that were sold but I've got the email update Corneo heading to Chelsea for 13 million actually looks to be quite promising but I don't think we'll have enough time in this rebuild to see him make the starting 11 or substitutes so this will be the squad loadout for the remainder of the season I'm hoping that that Pavlenka injury doesn't end up costing us because he's likely been carrying the team at an 87 rating but getting into the knockout stages we've got a Portuguese side in the round of 32 3 no victory in the first leg 3 no victory in the second leg. Easy advance there. I don't know what's up with us matching these difficult opponents. Manchester United in the round of 16. However, we pick up a clutch 2 no victory in the home fixture. 
Manchester United try to make things close in the second leg. But again, it's a winning result for us as we will be advancing to the quarterfinals against AC Milan. Arguably our toughest opponent to date, and that definitely showed in the simulated fixtures. 2-0 in the away leg, 1-0 in the home leg. So that will see our dream of lifting some silverware coming to an end this season. For what accounts, Milan did go on to win the Europa League as they defeated Leicester City 2-0 in the final. Well, usually feature any important matches for the gameplay. There weren't really any for this season, so we're just going to get right into the squad updates. I think we made a strong push toward the end of the year as Pavlenka returned from his injury, and that was enough for us to see a second place finish in the Bundesliga. Still 14 points behind league leaders Dortmund, but crucially, that will put us into Champions League for next season. Recapping some of the other competitions, Bayern won the Pokal 3-0 over Leipzig, and Manchester City winning Champions League on penalties 4-3 over Atletico Madrid. Cabral will continue his reign as the top goal scorer at Werder Bremen. 17 goals from 45, not quite the output that he had in season four. And it's our new signing Haji that saw a plus four in his overall and starting to approach the double digit numbers for assists as he had nine from 45. Dingchi is actually an original player in the Werder Bremen squad. It's unfortunate he doesn't have one of these player silhouettes, but apparently he has decent potential as he's up to an 80 overall, just 23 years old as well. So as Fulkrug starts to drop in his rating, I see him taking over as one of our backup strikers. Despite a pretty strong performance reaching the later stages of Europa League and finishing second in the Bundesliga, it didn't match up all that well with our board objectives as we're still in the red at a 68 overall. And I think we now have less risk of being sacked by the board and we can push on for a strong season six campaign. While we've established ourselves as one of the top teams in Germany, the main question heading into season six is whether we can compete in Champions League. To be fair, one of the clubs in our group, Manchester United, we defeated in the Europa League knockouts. So I'm hoping we can achieve at least a second place finish and make some progress to the later stages. We've got 90 million to work with in our transfer budget, but the main move for this season is that we're going to be changing our game plan for our homegrown talent, Christian Schmidt. Initially, I was using him as the central center midfielder. But season after season, his attacking stats got better and better. His defending stats remained pretty stagnant. So from here on out, we're going to be using him as a center attacking midfielder and probably shifting him over to the left side. That did give him a plus four in his rating, also a squad number change. I think it's only right that we make him the number 11. As a reminder, this was Klose and Ozil's number, and I think we have kind of a hybrid between those two players here. Outside of Friedel, we don't have too many Austrian players in this team, and with Schmidt now shifting over to the left side, we're going to look to bring in Konrad Leimer, the former Bundesliga player who has now transferred to Olympic Lyon. This is a club that we have some transfer history with. Cher left a couple of seasons ago, and now we'll bring in Leimar for 60 million. With the arrival of another midfielder, Max Meyer will see his time at Bremen come to an end. And again, it's Lazio paying a pretty considerable fun. First, they signed Bettencourt. Now they're going to sign another central midfielder in Meyer. With any long-term save, you're inevitably going to have players that grow season after season, but don't really fit into your squad plans. So we're going to have three other departures. Schoenfelder will be off to the Eredivisie for 4.9 million. Mbaum going to the Super League for 4 million. And one of our backup goalkeepers, Plogman, going to Michelin. Although the squad is definitely good enough for Champions League, we do have some decisions to make. You can see some of our youth academy players from Peru are starting to hit the 80s for their overall, so maybe considering them for the future. And Haji, despite not being in the starting 11, will feature as a consistent substitute because he can play pretty much anywhere in the midfield. We had high expectations for season six, but checking in in the January transfer window, we're doing all right in the league. 37 points, six points behind Hertha Berlin, who continued to be one of the most dominant teams in the Bundesliga. But bad news as we finish third in Champions League, both Manchester United and Marseille put in pretty good shifts. And while 10 points would usually be enough to finish at least second, we're unfortunately going to be dropping out of Champions League and into the Europa League for the third consecutive season. Because we had so many player arrivals to start the season, and with us now regressing for European competitions, I decided not to make any more transfers. But we'll follow along with our progress in Europa League, starting the round of 32 with fixtures against Celtic. 2-0 in the away leg, 2-0 in the home leg. And finally, we've got some easier fixtures. It's Basel in the round of 16. This is Cabral's former club, but it's our other striker, Solis, that netted a hat trick in the away match. And despite losing in the home fixture, we're still going to be advancing on aggregate. Quarterfinals against Shakhtar Donetsk. Cabral coming in with a clutch 50th minute goal to see us the winner in the away match. A draw in the home match means again that we'll be advancing on aggregate. Now into the semi-finals. It's Valencia. Definitely up there with Spain's top sides, especially later in career mode. But it's a sole goal from Christian Schmidt 
in the 72nd minute that saw us with a 1-0 victory in the home fixture and one crucial away goal despite a losing effort means that we'll be advancing to the away goals rule and we're into the final of Europa League but I would argue the Bundesliga was more of an interesting storyline than Europa League and that's saying something heading into the final match day we are three points ahead of Borussia Dortmund and guess who our opponent is of course it's the very team that's trying to pass us up Dortmund has had a couple of good campaigns throughout this rebuild but with us playing this match at home I like our chances even if we need to move around our squad a little bit I think Cabral was suspended from this match due to receiving a red card in a previous fixture so we had Schmidt playing at striker I told you guys he was a hybrid between Ozil and Klosa and we may need to rely on him to score some goals for us in this one. First highlight in the second half and it's the 55th minute Haji getting a rare start despite being moved to more of a rotational player he can still make the impact on this squad the rebound heading straight back to Solis he'll find the back of the net that gives us the crucial go-ahead goal a draw would be enough for us to finish top of the table but we're looking to see out these home fans with a win it's Schmidt on his left the finesse shot into the back of the net 68th minute and it looks like we will be winning the Bundesliga title in a winning fashion Look at this run though from Agu, 84th minute. I don't know what the Dortmund defenders were doing, but he's going to go from coast to coast, the chip shot effort to the far post. Really like this player in the rebuild, especially in terms of his in-game action. Any attacking fullbacks are just a joy to use in FIFA 21. And the five of the back formation don't sleep on that because it offers enough cover defensively as well as players moving forward on the attack. Winning the Bundesliga was absolutely a key objective for this rebuild. This will mark Bremen's second Bundesliga title in the 21st century. And it's fitting that three of our younger players ended up being the goal scorer. Solis, a new transfer. Schmidt, our homegrown player. And Agu, one of the original Werder Bremen players from season one. It's Victor Nelson to lift the trophy. He has emerged as the captain captain for the squad due to his leadership trait good to see so many original Werder Bremen players in the celebration as well they ended up playing a big role in this save and it's one of the many reasons why I often recommend Bremen as a long-term rebuild of course we've got some high emotions from winning the Bundesliga title but we still have one fixture remaining this season it's the Europa League final against Lyon wish this would have been Champions League but a trophy is a trophy and we will see a 2-0 victory in this final over Lyon so looking at the final standings for the Bundesliga six points ahead of Dortmund not a bad campaign from them though as they won the DFB Pokal 2-0 over Köln in the final Manchester City winning another Champions League trophy defeating Liverpool in that final and some of our players will finally emerge as the top goal scorers Cabral with 24 goals from 31 Bundesliga matches this is the output that I was looking for and also Eggestein getting double digits in assists 11 from 34. No surprise that Cabral was the top scorer across all competitions as well. 30 from 46 is his final number. Eggestein and Schmidt both getting in the double digits for assists and he had that massive bump in his rating by converting to a center attacking mid which allowed him to grow plus six over the course of season six. How this manager rating is staying in the red is beyond me but if we can continue this momentum heading into season seven I have no doubt that we can bring a Champions League trophy home to Bremen which is the final achievement that I'm looking to accomplish in this rebuild. At this stage of the rebuild, all that's left is to find any remaining weak areas in the team, and maybe we can see the jump up in the rating of some positions. Also, no troubles in the transfer balance, 118 million that we have to spend, and a chance for revenge in our Champions League group. We've already defeated Valencia, but you might recall a couple of years ago, Milan knocked us out of the Europa League, and nothing against Dynamo Kiev, but I think their odds of advancing out of the group are slim. Although there's a lot of ambiguity about what manager rating pertains to, I'm going to pay close attention to these objectives for Season 7, get that manager rating up, and hopefully hopefully that'll be enough to carry us through to a Champions League victory as we are looking to sign a crucial first team midfielder we're going to turn to one of FIFA 21's wonder kids Eduardo Camavinga who at this stage of his career has made the transfer to Leeds who might be making the push up to European spots but is likely outside of the top six in England so we'll complete this transfer for 125 million just above his evaluation and he'll take over as our starting central center midfielder that's quite good for squad def as now we have both Limer and Haji available on the bench but a busy start to our 2026-27 season two different super cups to play the German one and also the European super cup against Champions League winners Manchester City let's not forget about the Bundesliga as we look to go back to back in that competition a three for three start to our campaign and we'll check in in the January transfer window things have gone well for us in the Champions League group stage both us and Milan finishing on 13 points but we have the better goal differential we also sit top of the Bundesliga Bayern are the closest team sitting two points behind us 
one problem i ran into for this rebuild is players requesting a transfer because they didn't receive enough play time that's inevitably going to happen and while haji has developed really nicely in this save he just doesn't fit into the team anymore and he probably deserves the transfer away so atletico madrid come in for the transfer a nine digit sum as after things are all said and done i see us receiving about 90 million added to our transfer balance and we'll look to improve at the center back position marquinhos still going strong in this save at psg they've actually been knocked out of champions league i think they finished third in their group so they're into europa league it's tough to envision which sort of world-class players would be looking to make the transfer way as he has spent the majority of his playing career at the French club but we need to add quality and experience that certainly comes with this transfer 85 million is what we have to spend not a bad deal by any means adding another defender to our squad to accompany Koch at the 90 rating and I can definitively say there's not much left for us to do we need a little bit luck on our side to go on in Champions League anything can happen on the simulations and the matchups speaking of matchups what bad luck to draw against Manchester City. They've won Champions League a couple of times throughout this rebuild. They did end up winning the away leg 2-1. to one, But in a dramatic outing, we will advance on aggregate a 3-1 victory in the home fixture. Real Madrid in the quarterfinals. Clearly, we're not going to have an easy path to the final. We did end up managing a 2-0 victory in the home leg a 1-0 victory in the away leg, giving us a clean sheet in this stage of Champions League. The Stars have a line, and we match up against Milan in the semifinals. I feel like they have kind of been our arch nemesis throughout this rebuild, knocking us out of Europa League, and it looks like they were going to do that in Champions League as well, as they won our home fixture 2-1. to one. But it was Laimer to come on in the 50th minute. He scored two goals in the 83rd and the 89th, both of which were necessary and will be advanced into the final of Champions League courtesy of a 3-2 win on aggregate. That final of Champions League will be played against Liverpool, but first we need to get through the DFB Pokal as we've already wrapped up the Bundesliga, finishing 11 points clear of FC Bayern. Unfortunately, we did suffer a loss in the League Cup. Berlin have a strong squad, which led them to a 1-0 victory, but we'll need to shake it off as the main objective for us was Champions League going into the season. Here we are, and it's Liverpool that we'll need to defeat. They made some fairly realistic transfers throughout this save, bringing in Jude Bellingham in the midfield. Still a lot of original Liverpool players in the squad. Salah must be approaching the end stages of his career. But as we walk out onto the pitch, the atmosphere was electric. Miroslav Klose looking over us, trying to spur us on to a victory. And I've got to say, this is made for a really fun rebuild. I'm definitely interested interested in doing more of this content in the future that is if you guys find it entertaining as well for me crew mode is all about developing different storylines and i think we've done a decent job of developing this Werder bremen story after seeing relegation to the Schweizer bundesliga here we are competing to be one of europe's top sides heading into the highlights i feel like everything has led up to this point the squad was in great form to start off the match fantastic passing play and it's schmidt on his right foot to find the back of the net. He served as a striker in some cases, but in this match, he was just playing box to box in the midfield, getting involved in the attack time after time. It's Solis again down this left side in the 16th minute, sees the run from Schmidt, takes a heavy touch, and again, he finds himself one-on-one -on -one with Allison. Look at this for a finish. The Lit tried to get the block in, but the power and placement behind the shot was too much to be stopped. A good look at it here from the replay. Ali Sun was rooted to the spot, and you could argue that DeLitt did more harm than good. Still in the first half here, and it's Liverpool finally getting something going. Fabinho nearly scoring what would have been goal of the Champions League, taking that one on the volley, but you can see going just wide of the post. Don't think Pavlenka would have had it covered. We're into the 36th minute now, and it's Simakas who sends it across. Would have been fantastic if Solis could have found the back of the net there, but on the ensuing corner kick, it's Cabral, who I think this is the first time we've seen a goal from him in the gameplay. Definitely known to have a target man sort of build, jumping over to lit there and a well-placed header to find the back of the net, giving us a three goal lead. I don't think Liverpool had tactics right in this one. You can see they're trying the press, but even when they're played through, they didn't make the most of their chances. Good save on Pavlenka's near post, denying the effort from Mo Salah. Just gets a nice kick save to it. And we're going to see another highlight from Liverpool in the 58th. They get dispossessed. And it's Agu. You might remember he made that coast-to-coast -coast run a few seasons ago. He's going to try to do it again here. Did it against Dortmund. Nearly did it against Liverpool. As we will make a change. Friedel being an original member of the Werder Bremen squad. I felt like it was only right to bring him on for the last half an hour or so. As it's going to be one final chance for Liverpool. Trying to get the ball forward. Friedel does win the header. Schmidt is played through. See if he 
could potentially get a hat trick in the Champions League final, but he has his shot blocked by Alisson. Ref will call for full time at that point. And just like that, the rebuild will be coming to an end. It took us seven seasons, honestly longer than I would have expected, but I felt like the pacing was pretty good. We got back in the Bundesliga right away, made those gradual improvements, eventually found our way into Europa League. And after spending maybe a season too long in that competition, we had a quick path to the final in Champions League. I'm very proud of the squad and I'm ecstatic that we were able to find kind of a regen of former Werder Bremen players. So with that said, we'll showcase the final squad and the ratings of this Werder Bremen team. See if that manager rating finally ended up in the green. Had this rebuild gone on another season or two, we might have seen a drop off in player ratings. Most of our starting 11 talent was reaching the peak stages of their career. And ultimately, it was Schmidt who had the highest overall in the squad at a 93. Cabral follows up as the top goal scorer in the Bundesliga yet again. Schmidt with the most assists and Pavlenka had the most clean sheets in the league. We go three for three. We already talked about the DFA Pokal as well as Champions League, but to recap, Europa League, it was PSG that won that competition. And for goals across all competitions, slightly lower numbers this season, but still enough to get the job done. Cabral led the way here, 27 goals from 52 appearances. Schmidt with 16 assists from 54 appearances. And if you are interested, here is a full squad recap. We didn't move around our starting 11 too much for season seven because we were involved in such prestigious competitions and I wanted to feature our best players whenever possible, but still had a little bit of rotation here and there. Our youth academy talents that came through ended up being really promising and given a couple more seasons, could have reached an even higher rating. When everything was said and done, we finished with an 85 manager rating. I'll absolutely take that considering we won the Bundesliga as well as Champions League. But I want to give a big thanks to channel members for supporting what we do here on YouTube. If you are interested in joining the membership program, click the join button right underneath the video, unlock some exclusive perks to the channel. And also let me know your thoughts on this rebuild and if you want to see more content like this in the future. If you have any team suggestions, I would totally be open to hearing that. But if you did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new. But until next time, this has been Flick. I'll be talking to you all again soon.